Tech family, with me is the Yoga 6, a very interesting device that I just wanted to hop online and tell you about. When I first heard of it, it was just before Black Friday, and the thing that stood out the most was that this is a budget laptop with a Ryzen 6 core 12 thread processor for a price of around 500 US dollars. This is highly unusual. Normally, these laptops tend to have a 6 core 6 thread processor, so I was super excited to see how it performed and went straight out to Best Buy to take a look at it. As I mentioned previously on this channel, I don't have time to review all laptops. I'm super selective about which I choose to review. I'm on the lookout for the laptops that I truly believe have the potential to be the best for you guys. Therefore, if the laptop is on display, I like to check it out first before buying it and doing a full review. If it's garbage in the store, I won't waste my time. Unfortunately, when I got to Best Buy, even though they were selling it, they didn't have it on display. I thought to myself, I have a lot of Black Friday content to produce. I probably won't get around to this laptop for a while, so better not to buy it. But over the last couple of weeks, I've kept watching and reading buyers' reviews of the laptop, and it seems that it's a pretty popular machine. Plus, I haven't seen any reviewers cover it, so I got it in and took a good look at it. Now, at the time of filming, CES is upon us, and it's likely we have a newer range of processors, which is great. However, I've decided to still create this video as budget laptops like this one tend to continue to sell for some time, so I feel it's a relevant video. Plus, who knows, they may just put an updated processor in the same laptop. You know me guys, I value your time, so I'm just going to cut to the chase. This laptop is absolutely not for people looking to get the most CPU performance out of their device. If that's you, grab some tissues as you aren't going to be happy. If, however, you are a casual user looking for a really solid all-round budget laptop, then buckle up, you're going to enjoy this ride. By the way, if at the end of this video you like what you watched, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these. Specs of my unit on screen, I have the AMD Ryzen 7 4700U model with 16GB of RAM and a 1TB SSD. Unfortunately, I don't have the more interesting Ryzen 5 4650U model with 8GB of RAM, which is the model with 6 cores and 12 threads. This laptop looks super stylish and feels high quality. Normally, I would have the laptop I'm talking about open on the desk, but this laptop just looks so freaking good shut that I wanted to show you. The blue colour with the material on top looks very stylish and really punches above its price point. Build-wise, it's very sturdy, not much flex at all. It doesn't open with one hand, but I'm totally okay with that as this is a two-in-one device and you definitely want a sturdy hinge on that kind of device. Now, several people have asked questions about how easy it is to clean. To answer them, I thought we'd try the classic peanut butter test. When spreading peanut butter on a laptop, you want to get a generous amount of peanut butter on a knife like this and spread it like so. All right, now let's see if it comes off. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use the, you know, the blunt end of the knife like this to try and scrape it off like so. Clean the knife, take a bit more off. Most of it is coming off pretty well here. You can hear me scraping it off. Okay, now that we've scraped off the peanut butter, we're gonna use a soft kitchen sponge, which I have right here. We can use the soft part of the sponge and we're going to try and just scrape off the remaining. And guys, it's coming off pretty well. You can see a little bit of where it was, but overall it's coming off reasonably well. So this material does look fairly robust. And now what I'm going to just do is pat it, start to pat it dry with a paper towel. Not so bad, not so bad. I think I can see a little bit of an outline where the peanut butter was, but it's, it's lifting out quite nicely from the material. So guys, the material cover performed reasonably well. It is salvageable if you were to have a spill on it or spread peanut butter on your laptop. The display is very good for the price point. In fact, it's a standout compared to most budget laptops. It has good brightness, excellent contrast, and great color reproduction. It is a 13.3 inch, 16 by nine aspect ratio, 1920 by 1080 display. I've talked a lot about this kind of display in prior videos. I personally find this sort of display too small. I have to run Windows scaling at 125% to see information comfortably. This means I lose a lot of screen real estate compared to running a 1920 display at 100% scaling. It's not a zoomed in. I wouldn't recommend using a device with a screen this small as your primary productivity one, particularly if you're using a lot of office applications, coding, etc., especially those that go down the page. 
It is great as a secondary device if you have a bigger laptop or desktop. But with a screen size and aspect ratio like this, I feel this laptop is best suited to consuming media and sending emails. Obviously, if you have an external display to plug into, this issue goes out the window. By the way, this is my first indication that this laptop is better suited for casual users. The screen is a touchscreen and as mentioned folds into a tablet. The display had no dead pixels, noticeable backlight bleed or use PWM flickering to lower the brightness, which is good. It is a little glossy and reflective though, which you'll notice in some of my B-roll shots. So this isn't the laptop to get if you plan to use it outdoors or in very brightly lit environments. The keyboard is not the most comfortable, but it's good enough. It definitely feels low travel. However, the keys do have a satisfying click to them. The layout is good with no surprises. The backlight works well with adequate contrast between the key characters and the keys. So you can easily make out the keys in all lighting conditions. It's also easy to swap the function keys from primary to secondary in Lenovo's Vantage software. The trackpad like the keyboard works well, but isn't my favorite. The surface has a rubbery texture to it, so it isn't as smooth to glide your finger across as other trackpads. That being said, I still did find it accurate and didn't have any misclicks. The speakers are front facing and get quite loud, which is good. That being said, they definitely lack bass. Overall, it's another good enough, but not great. There is a decent selection of ports with two USB A's and two USB C's. All of the slower USB 3.1 Gen 1 though. Even though there is a USB-C port on each side of the laptop, only the one on the left supports charging. This is a pet peeve of mine as you'll have to run a cable around the back if your charging port is on the other side. This can get in your way. I was able to drive an external 4K display at 60Hz without issue. Let's talk performance. The Ryzen 4700U 8-core 8 8-thread 8 CPU in this laptop is very well known by now. What I thought would be interesting would be to see how this laptop performs versus other laptops with the same CPU. That way we can assess the cooling and other performance related factors of this laptop. So I'm going to test it versus my IdeaPad 5 14 and Redmi Book 16 which have the same CPU. To round out the tests, I'll include results from my Dell XPS 9310 with Intel's i7 11th gen CPU. Geekbench results on screen. This runs a variety of performance tests. You can see straight away, single core results are in line with other Ryzen laptops. However, multi-core scores look off, more in line with Intel than AMD. Let's now take a look at Cinebench R23, which maxes out the CPU. Whoa, things are definitely looking off here. This laptop substantially underperforms the other laptops with the same CPU. It performs similar to my IdeaPad 515 with the Ryzen 6 core 6 thread CPU. What is going on? Take a look at the power draw when running Cinebench. You can see exactly what is happening. This laptop draws substantially less power than the other laptops. 25 watts for the initial burst and then on intelligent cooling it drops to 10 watts and extreme performance it drops to 15. The positive benefit of such a low power draw is that it is one of the coolest feeling laptops to the touch that I've ever used. At worst it gets mildly warm when using it on your lap. However, on a desk, it's going to be very cool. Funnily enough, I would have thought that fan noise would also be good given such a low power draw, but it isn't. Under load, it's one of the loudest of the bunch. Please keep in mind, this is a significantly smaller chassis than the laptops I'm comparing it to, so it's likely harder to cool. In day-to-day -day usage though, the fan noise was a bit rough. I definitely heard the fans come on fairly regularly, even on the default intelligent cooling profile. What's interesting to me is when running on battery power, the fans didn't come on at all and I saw no slowdowns in application performance. So I'm surprised that the fans need to come on when the laptop is plugged in running the exact same applications. Now, before you write off this laptop completely due to the low multi-core performance, take a look at the PC Mark results. This tests standard office applications and casual user tasks. As you can see, for this the performance is totally fine. It is kind of saying to me that this laptop is really designed for casual users and absolutely isn't the right solution for people looking for a high performance laptop. For that, you'll want one of the idea pads that I tested it against. Before we leave performance, Wi-Fi 6 speeds were excellent and the SSD speeds were decent. If you want to see inside the laptop, here it is. RAM is soldered, but the SSD is upgradable. The cooling solution doesn't look the most robust. This is how the webcam looks and sounds in excellent lighting conditions. It's okay, but not great. It does have a privacy filter on top, which is nice to see. The fingerprint reader works well. One thing I really don't like that I've seen numerous PC manufacturers do is pre-install bloatware on the laptop. These applications then have these awful pop-up advertisements. Yes, you can turn them off, but it's really unacceptable. We've already paid money for the laptop. Apple never does this and PC manufacturers need to follow suit. 
I thoroughly tested the laptop's battery performance, which is unusual for me especially at this time when we are mostly using the laptops at home and can just have them plugged in. Anyway, I had the laptop on full charge and sat online watching movies, writing documents, browsing the web and talking to you guys on the Discord server. I gave periodic updates real time of the battery usage as I gradually drained the 61 watt hour battery. What I experienced for real world usage was 6 to 8 hours of battery life. Please note, normally you can dim the laptop screen a decent amount to extend your battery life. However, this laptop's dimming curve is very steep. It only takes a couple of presses to drop the brightness a lot. Also be careful, one time I pulled out the power and the laptop didn't switch into Windows Better Battery Mode. This caused it to chew more power, so if you plan to use the laptop for a long time on battery, just make sure it's on the right mode. Lastly, pricing. This laptop retails at Best Buy for $699 US for the 6 core 12 thread model with 8GB of RAM, but you can frequently find it on a regular rotating sale for a lot less, like $550. So it definitely is a budget laptop, and you are getting a lot for your money here, which leads me to my conclusion. The age old statement, when buying a budget laptop holds true, you have to compromise. If you are a power user, this laptop isn't for you. It doesn't perform as well as other laptops with this processor and the screen is smaller than laptops that you can buy in this price range, like the ones right next to me. However, if you are a casual user or a student, this laptop is a very strong contender at the $550 US price point. You get a really good screen, a stylish, solidly constructed laptop and everything in this laptop just works well enough. It's clear to me why people are rating it so highly on Best Buy. The most accurate description I have for it, it's like buying the MacBook Pro 13 but for $550. There just aren't a lot of issues here if you are a casual user. Sure, the Asus ZenBook 14 which is similarly priced has a larger display and performs better, but you are having to accept a lot of issues with that laptop. No USB-C charging, keys that are hard to make out when the backlight is on, etc. One laptop I do want to mention before I go is the HP Envy X360 13 with AMD. It's very similar to this laptop, 13.3 inch display, 16 by 9 aspect ratio converts into a tablet. That laptop I believe is a step up from this one. When using the Yoga 6, due to the it's good enough but not great items that I mentioned in this video like the trackpad or keyboard etc, I regularly felt I can't wait to get back to using one of my more expensive laptops. I didn't have that same feeling when I was using the HP Envy, it just felt a higher quality device. So if you can afford the Envy with a minimum of the 300 nit brightness display but preferably the 400 nit model, I'd try to get that over this laptop. That being said, in the budget price range, this is a solid offering. Well, that's all for today folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. I would certainly appreciate it. I'll post links to the Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and now TikTok in the description below. Till next time, I will catch you later.